plane is about to land in Kuching International Airport, first time visitors will probably be fascinated by the rivers and the their way towards the sea. Far in the horizon, on a clear day, limestone upcrops and rolling hills could be seen. Rich in natural and cultural attractions, Sarawak provides awesome adventures for visitors to discover. Recognizing this, Sarawak has been identifying places to be established as geoparks. Thus, the Sarawak Delta Geopark was established. It gained recognition as a national geopark in 2022. Now, what is this Sarawak Delta Geopark? Let's continue watching. Upon landing at the airport, as you leave the airport, a big signage welcomes visitors to the Sarawak Delta Geopark. Besides establishing the Sarawak Delta Geopark, it is also the objective of Sarawak to get it recognized as UNESCO Global Geopark. A lot of planning and action has been put into place and it is now in its final stages. Among the important people to promote and introduce this geopark are the tourist guides. So efforts are being made to get the local tourist guides acquainted with the Sarawak Delta Geopark through various ways. Recently, I followed a course organized by the Ministry of Tourism, Creative Industry and Performing Arts Sarawak and this video highlights some of the happenings in this course. And uh, this is the second base of uh, RSTG uh, of advanced uh, courses on the Western Sarawak, uh, mainly on the geoparks and also on the other aspects of uh, tour guiding later on. So I'm going to talk about the post-COVID development strategy on the tourism perspective. Yeah? So at least you want to know uh, in your tour guiding, you're able to have the government how to uh, or achieve certain things, yeah? And with your participant also, that will help to contribute to this uh, post-COVID development strategy. That's why I call the introduction to Sarawak Data Geopark, just to give you all uh, an idea what is Sarawak Data Geopark is all about. Okay? Kenaknya dipanggil Sarawak Data Global Geopark. Briefly about Sarawak Data Geopark. So, it's the map. That is the important part of it. We cover 3,112 kilometer. Okay, and it was officially endorsed by the state government or by the Sarawak government uh, and the National Geopark on June 20, 2022. Sudah lama, sudah sebenarnya. Hal Geopark talk. Alright. <coughs> so, Geopark normally is look at the community, is look at the biodiversity, the geology, uh, features of it, and cultures, heritage. Okay, like that. If you look at the farm map, this is our farm map. So this is the area covered by Sawak Delta Geopark, Kuching, Tedawan, Bau area. To impress upon you that uh, you take this geopark seriously, because any time any any one of you will be guiding people from other parts of Malaysia to promote Sawak as a geopark destination, it's already being done. So the first part will be from Dr. Dana because he is the right person. Huh? And then I will take over and later on I will invite other senior geologists. I will introduce him then and there so that you know who he is. Uh, see, uh, eagerly to show you this map. Why this map? Because we are, our, our route of tomorrow is the West Sarawak. This is the West Sarawak. For the geologists, all on the left side of the Sungai Matang Lupar adalah left Sarawak. International geologists, semua tahu tu. West Sarawak. And then, there is a Central Sarawak and Northern Sarawak. Different zone of geological, different as of geology and different uh, uh, history of geological uh, in the Sarawak actually. Uh, when we talk about minerals in Sarawak, 
there are two zones in Sarawak that divides the area where you have more metallics on one side and then you have you have less metallic on one side but more to oil and gas. The lines that divide it is the Lupa line because to the west from the Lupa line you have the older rocks meaning that is uh, more older than 70 million years old and beyond from the Srian, the Lupa line, if you draw the line from Triso all the way down to Lubuantu, there is the line. And then go towards north and northeast, you have the younger rocks. Okay, uh, tadi dah di introduce lutenik dengan volcanic. No, oh, oh, oh. the whole, the whole small. The two type of rock. This is all the volcanic, and then the the fair one, slightly light color is lutenik. Oh, dia punya berbeza, dia punya grain size. Volcanic blue, blue tone, blue tone, blue tone, blue tone. Blue tone. Yeah. River flow. It's like really level by level. Mm. Over the years, as it recedes, 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 and then here the lower level. I like this one. Beautiful. And we let. What do you think the you, you animal see, uh, that some trash, this trash, shell trash here? Uh, is in that live around uh, this kind of formation, this kind of habitat, right? They are known to take the snail and smash it against the rock. That's why you see it's broken. So they can eat the inside. What was stone trash? Trash. It's a bird. Bird. It's a bird. It's a bird. What was it? What was it? What's it, what's the name again? Just trash. Trash. Just trash. T H R U S H. You will be able to see one in wind cave. To close this place up, or else this will be gone. This is a complete one. I mean, you can see really the shell. The mist. The nut. The yeah. This area used to be active in gold mining. The one on your right, those hills, uh, that one is part of the Red Krian National Park. They are all limestones. Uh, selamat uh, tengah hari dan selamat datanglah ke Windcat uh, Nature Reserve. And then uh, saya Lain Desli. Uh, saya dah dapat wajan di for wind and ferry cap lah jadi dapat okay and then hari ini saya dibantu oleh uh, Jack Sobri dia adalah uh, park ranger di sini and then uh, untuk untuk semua wind cap ini di watak uh, berkeluasan 6.16 hektar 
dan diwatakan pada 19 tahun 1909 di bawah kebinan Taman Kara Rizab Sumbra Jadi Dan Winkef Nature merupakan salah satu Jotapa dan Bayotapa di dalam Sarawak Delta Jopak yaitu Jopak pertama di Sarawak yang juga aspiring UNESCO Global Jopak Kenapa Winkef Nature Reserve merupakan Jotapa penting dalam Sarawak Delta Jopak? Yang pertama, Jopak ini Jotapa ini dibentuk oleh morfologi utama Bukit Batu Kapol dan Gua merupakan Jotapa khas Batu Kapol yang tertua di Sarawak berusia kira-kira 145 juta tahun Okay, so these two uh, fossils you can find along this way This is very common okay. So why you can find only this uh, type of fossils, not dinosaur? Yeah, this is one my question to you Yeah, okay Yes, because these limestones, uh, the position of the limestone must have uh, the environment is a shallow marine environment, alright? So typically, the animals that uh, live in this kind of environment is this type of things. Uh, the corals, all the things with shells. So this thing that made up the limestone. Ah, macam tu. Ah, apa tu? Yang sekarang tengah record tu. What is this? Is it just report or bible? Bible. I just want to direct your attention to what we have here, which is, uh, which is the bear hole. Okay, bear hole is uh, described as event, so so it's A V E N S event. Now, normally, if you have to understand about how this is created, you must know. That limestone is a permeable rock. It's like a sponge. When it rains, like it rains today, the water will take a few days for it to go through the area of uh, limestone and come out. So those points that you see are the, are the ancient points where the water is trying to get through. This bell hole uh, try to accommodate the wildlife. Yes, because uh, these points. Because uh, normally bats are very si uh, shy creatures, mm. so some of species of bats in the area of the actually we're not in twilight, we're still somewhere close to the light zone. Okay, light zone areas would inhibit certain type of bats living inside this bell oh. hole mm. because it creates a natural protection for them. So the bats that make um, uh, their residence in this bell hole, they're very tiny type of bats. Mm -hmm. uh, some people call them bumblebee bats because they look uh, very tiny. Well, as well, mostly we have uh, scorpions. Scorpion. Scorpion. Sometimes we have uh, the remnants of uh, the bird. Cover, the bird nest. Okay, the bird nest is most mostly swift birds. Uh, and there's a gold ducker that is different species living. Yeah. Uh, some of these animals. Yeah. Racers snake, they live in the twilight zone and entrance zone. Yeah, yeah. They make it all possible. Bats. Some more. Bats. 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 When you shine the light just now, you see sparkling thing on on this uh, ceiling. Yeah? Yeah. You can see ah, that's other sparkling, shining thing. No, no, not too bright the light. Yeah, yeah, bright, gila, gila. Ah, 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 you can see now. Ah, apa itu? Warm water. Is it water or mineral? Mineral. 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 What mineral? Uh, quartz. 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 Salt crystal. Salt crystal. Salt crystal. What kind of salt? Calcite.
Our group theme is how household item and product from the rainforest. You see, uh, so as the current move is called the longshore drift. The current is called longshore drift. It goes this way. And as it goes this way, some of the sand were deposited here to make a new land. And this is called the sand spit, S-A-N-D-S-P-I-T. This is come Luka. under the study of geomorphology. Tambah sikit. Geology can be anything. Geological process. Long time ago, the Pulau Datu, Pulau Kerak bersambung. This is connected with this uh, mainland. But due to erosion, this is taking long time lah. Due to erosion, just like our cystic lah. Dulu bersambung. <laughs> due to the uh, geological process, and then isolated. Uh, we actually need your idea, okay, as a guide. How does we best improve or best sell our geosite? Taking a dancer to access. That's very interesting. Right. Uh, yeah, this is the standard uh, we use for outside from time to time. But again, much of the same, it will take years, or a hundred years. So this is the only uh, Slakono house within this Lundu area. They came from uh, Gunung Bawang on the other side. And Gunung Bawang is similar, on the other side of the water is similar, the soil is similar. So they settled down here. So they, they, they thought that Samara can be able to eat buah-buahan and all these things. So they settled down here. And the longhouse used to be on the other side. Now this, uh, they rebuilt the longhouse. Our their site is sometime in the 1950. They came here in 1820s or something. Long time ago. Huh? This trip has been an eye opener for me. This was only one part of the course in the introduction to the Sarawak Delta Geopark. There will be more courses conducted on the other parts of the Geopark in time to come. I hope to be able to be there when the courses are held.